Hey, so today I have something a little bit different. We have two integrals in one, really. They, on the integration B, problem five and 22, they use the same integral. One is the definite integral and one is the indefinite integral. So what we have here is actually problem five. If we solve the indefinite integral, what we'll do is we'll ignore the bounds, we'll solve 22 first, and then we'll come back and plug in the bounds to solve five. I think what I wanna do in this problem is use trig substitution, and it's not quite set up exactly how we want, but we can make this work. We need, what we wanna do is we wanna get um, the coefficient on here to be 12. So to do that, we need to multiply by a four, and it's squared. So what I'm gonna do is my substitution is gonna be, for x, is gonna be two sine of t. And the reason why that works is because if we look at x squared, that's just going to be four sine squared t. And now let's find our dx value. So dx is gonna be the derivative of this, is gonna be two cosine of t dt. Okay, and then we'll make the substitution. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove these bounds and ignore that. We'll come back to that later when we're dealing with problem 5. So making the substitution, we're going to have the square root of 12 minus, this is going to be 3 times 4 on this x squared sine squared t. And then we're going to have outside the integral, we're going to have 2 cos t dt. This right here is 12, so I'm just going to clean that up so we have a 12 in there. And then what I like to do here is we can just factor a 12 out of this. We're gonna have this as one minus sine squared t, okay? But then when I rewrite this, what I'm gonna do, we'll bring a two in front of the integral. And then I'm also gonna take out this 12, so we'll bring this out as a square root of 12. So let's see what happens when we rewrite this. Then next from our square root of 12, we could take a four from that. So the square root of four is gonna be another two. So we can write this as four square root of three. And then this one minus sine squared t is actually just cosine squared t inside the square root, that's just gonna be cosine t. So when we write this whole thing, we're gonna have four square root of three, cosine times cosine here is gonna be cosine squared t dt. But now we can use the power reduction formula on this cosine squared t and we can write this as half plus half cosine of two t. Okay, now we're ready to integrate this thing. So we'll have our four square root of three in front. Then we're gonna have integral half is gonna be half t. Integral of cos two t is gonna be sine two t, but then we'll take our two out in the denominator. So we're gonna have half times half, so we're gonna have a one fourth in front here. Okay, from here we're almost ready to back substitute, but I think I wanna do a few things for first. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a one fourth out of here to cancel with this four so that when front, we're gonna have square root of three. If I take a one fourth out here, we're gonna have two t plus sine of two t, but I'm gonna write that as two sine t cos t. And then before I back substitute, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna work with this to get all the values we need. So we have x equals two sine of t. Well, then we can say sine of t is just equal to x over two divided by two on both sides. And then we also can get a value for t that we're gonna need by just taking the inverse sine. So we can say that t equals inverse sine or arc sine of x over two. And then I think the only other value we need is cosine of t. Well, we can do that by drawing our triangle and getting some proportions of the side. So let's just do that right now. Okay, so we're looking at our triangle with the angle t, just our angle, so sine of t, if we say sine of t is x over two, then that means opposite over hypotenuse is x over two. So we create, so our ratio is gonna be x over two. But then that's gonna, just by using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find this third side, and it's gonna be four minus x squared. But that makes it easy to find cosine, because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So for cosine of t, we're just gonna have this square root of four minus x squared over two. Okay, so now I have everything to back substitute, so we'll rewrite this. We're gonna have two square root of three. Our t value is here. So we have sine inverse x over two plus sine of t, which is gonna be x over two times cosine of t, square root of four minus x squared over two. And then just one more little simplification. I think I'll pull a one fourth out of here. We get the two times two here just to make it a little cleaner. So if I pull a one fourth out of here, we're gonna have square root of three over two. With the one fourth out, this is gonna become a four 
arc sine x over 2 plus x squared of 4 minus x squared plus c. Okay, so this will be our answer for our indefinite integral. That was problem 22. Now let's go back. Just to finish it off, we want to do problem 5. All we're doing is evaluating this from 0 to 2. So what I'm going to do is let's clean this up a little bit and evaluate it. Okay, so when you guys weren't looking, I erased the plus c because it's a definite integral. We don't have plus c, but we're going to evaluate it from 0 to 2. And just to make my life a little bit simpler, notice, just notice this term. When we plug a 2 into here, we have a 0. This 4 minus 2 squared is 0. And then when we plug 0 in, we have a 0 on the x, so that zeroes it out. So I'm just going to ignore this term completely because it's always 0. And then before I evaluate this, I'm just going to take my 4 out front because the constant value is going to, that's not going to affect how we evaluate it. So doing that, we're going to have 2 squared of 3, and then we're going to evaluate sine inverse x over 2. So first, we plug a 2 in here, we're evaluating it at uh, sine inverse of 1. And then plugging a 0 in, we're going to be evaluating sine inverse at 0. And then our value of sine inverse at 0 is just 0, so we can forget this term. And then sine inverse at 1, this actually happens at pi over 2. So then we just all we need to do is multiply pi over 2 times 2 square root of 3, and we get pi times the square root of 3. So that's it. Two for the price of one today. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.